spooky horror game lights or twinkling Christmas lights? You decide. In this video, we're going to look at three different ways to add flair to your emissive materials using Shader Graph. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you juice up your materials with fancy shaders. Now I know we're using Christmas lights as our specific use case here, but this really applies to any type of lights that you want to have different parts masked on and off over time. It just so happens to be that time of year where this was on my mind. The first of our three effects that we're going to do is going to make the lights, the emissive lights flicker more and less intensely over time and we're not going to be able to really predict how they're going to move and become more and less flickery. So depending on how we do that, it can either become like a spooky horror effect or it can be a nice subtle twinkle in your Christmas lights. If you're interested to see how that works in code, you can also check out the video that I've got linked in the description and card on the screen where I did this a while ago using C sharp. The second effect we're going to look at is going to make the lights come on and off in different segments of the shaders. So a lot of times in Christmas lights, it'll be like flickering back and forth between these lights are on, those lights are on, and they'll move back and forth in a predictable pattern. That's the type of thing we're going to do in the second effect. And the third effect is inspired by my neighbor who has some LED lights that just go all the time, just straight in a line over the garage. And it works very similar to that second effect. Just we're not going to do chunky steps from one segment to another. It's just going to be a smooth wave going across over time. This really works better on LED strip type lights, but I think with these bulbs, it'll still convey what we're trying to do. Let's jump in and get started. All right, in our scene, we don't have a lot going on, just a line render with a width of one and about 10 units long. So we've got a good chunk of these string lights to work with. In the GitHub repository, which is provided in this video for free, there are two important textures, Christmas lights and Christmas lights emissive. These are both basically the same thing, just one emissive has totally black, while the normal one has like a green line going through it. So we can see that shows up here. We can create a new shader by a shaders folder or anywhere in your project. Right click, create, shader graph. I'm using URP, but this also works in HDRP. We're not doing anything crazy. You can also use built in. It really doesn't matter. Whatever your render pipeline is, this should work pretty much out of the box. So we're going to choose lit and we'll call it maybe something like blinking lights. Let's open up that. And if we double click on top, that maximizes our window. In our main preview, because this is going to be mostly for a sprite, if we right click it, we can change that to something like quad and it'll show us only what we're looking at in a 2D format. We're going to need both the blackboard and the graph inspector. Let's open up those. In the graph settings, we definitely want this to be lit. I'm going to use a specular workflow. Surface type will be transparent. Only rendering on the front face because that line render is going to always face the camera. If you're going to put this on a 3D object, you may consider using both. I think pretty much the rest of this is OK, so we can leave all those alone. And on our blackboard, we're going to add a few options. First, we're going to need two textures, one the base map and one the emissive map. Probably we'll want an emissive color as well. On emission color, make sure we change that mode to HDR so we can add in extra intensity and get that nice bloom effect. Probably white is a good starting color for that. So we can see in our preview correctly, I'm going to adjust this default texture of the emission map to be our Christmas lights emissive as a black background. On our base map, we'll choose the Christmas lights. We're also probably going to want to adjust the speed that whatever this effect is goes at. So let's add in a float speed and maybe give that a default of one. That's all we're going to do for the graph inspector. So anytime we need to show a texture in base color or emission, we always want to take those texture 2D inputs, take them to a sample texture 2D. And for base map, we can just take that straight to the base color. And for alpha, we're going to want to take the alpha channel over there. We're not going to do too much with it. And as long as we're looking, we'll maybe set the specular color to be pure black and we probably don't want any ambient inclusion. Emission map will do basically the same thing and take that to emission. And that'll give us basically what we get with the built-in standard shaders. Now, the first effect that we were gonna do is to have the lights, sometimes they go up and down, become more bright and less bright over time, kind of randomly. Whenever we wanna deal with randomness in a shader, we usually use some kind of noise. So we can choose something like simple noise. And this scale is probably too large. Maybe we can set it to be something like 10. So it's a little bit less crazy. And we're going to want this to change over time based on some speed value. So we can go backwards from that UV to a multiply. We multiply the speed by the time. And 
And that looks random, right? So, so far so good. This might be too extreme though, if we just multiply this with our emission map. So like if we look at this, it's not great. Kind of looks like maybe you're losing power or something like that. So that might not be ideal. So we can massage the numbers before they go into this multiply. If we go smooth step in and use values maybe like 0.25 and 0.5, this makes it where it'll about half the time be clamped to one and about a fourth of the time be clamped to zero and anywhere in between 0.25 and 0.5, it'll smoothly lerp between those values using an S curve. Still not great because it goes fully black, which is probably not exactly what we want. Maybe we do, but I think it might look a little bit better if we used a remap where now the in min max will be zero to one and our out min max, we can do something like 0.25. So at the very least, they'll be a little bit lit up. Let's save that and take a look at it in the scene view. So the shader, we can just change it over to shader refs, blinking lights. So now they pulse a little bit semi-sporadically and we can make them more jittery by increasing the speed and less jittery by decreasing that speed for a much more subtle effect. Now, obviously you can parameterize all of these values where we just hard coded something here in the inspector, but because we're gonna be doing three different shader variants in this one shader, we're gonna just leave these alone here. Let's take all of these and group them together, call it maybe random flickering. For our second effect, where we're gonna have different segments of the light come on at different times. Again, we're gonna need basically this speed time multiply on each one of these. Let's just go ahead and copy paste that down here. And something that we can do is use the rectangle to mask out what should be lit up and what should not be lit up. So if we do a height of one and width of 0 0.5, that gives us about half of our texture to be lit up at any particular time. And basically we're gonna multiply this with our lights here to control what's gonna be lit up at any given point. So here already you can see only four of them show up in this particular case. We're gonna basically move the rectangle over time in a little bit of a jagged fashion so it very quickly transitions from one to the next so we don't see them like halfway lit up. To do that, we can do something like sealing this value. That gives us a whole second that's going to stay at one value. We can divide that by two, take that into a vector two, x, Make sure the Y component is zero because we're gonna take this to a tiling and offset. Offset, so we're gonna be scrolling along the X axis because that's how our texture is aligned. Before tiling and offset goes to that rectangle, we want to use the fraction node, which gives us the fractional component of whatever number we have here. So for example, if tiling and offset gave us 1.25, fraction will give us 0.25. And you can see by how this moves that that's gonna give us very choppy move from one segment to the next segment. And if we use a tiling value of one, this is one look that you could do. Let's save that, hop over to the scene view and dock the shader graph window to the bottom. And we can play with the different values like using two for tiling. That gives us a little bit different look. But you can see that we're capturing a little bit too much, like maybe one pixel too many here. So we reduce the rectangle width to like 0.47. We no longer have that extra clamped. That might be a little bit too small. So you can play with these values based on your texture to make sure you're getting only what you're actually wanting to get masked in and out. So this one alternates about once a second, which lights are on. Back in Shader Graph, let's group that as maybe alternating lights. And let's take a look at one last way that we could potentially light up different lights. We're gonna again, copy paste our speed times multiply piece. And we're gonna take that to a vector two X. We're gonna scroll along the X axis doing similar process to what we did above, but without the ceiling. So we're gonna move smoothly. So let's just take this to tiling and offset offset. Again, diffraction, but now we see it's going smoothly. And we can again do use this rectangle. So the rectangle will move smoothly and we can multiply with our emissive texture. Bring that one to the emission, save it and check out the scene view. Now we can see it's moving, but it's kind of tiled really obviously. So some parameters you might play with are the width. If you set the width really small, uh, very few of them on at a time or very large, there's just a little bit that's not on at a time. If we adjust the tiling on the X axis to a very small number, we leave more space between them. If we increase that, we get more repeating, more tiling with this effect. 
So if you set the tiling and offset to be very small, as well as a small rectangle, you get small strips that run by. And you can play with the speed still as well. So pretty cool, works with, again, more LED light strip type of things than the discrete Christmas lights because we can see the light bulbs are like progressively lit up across the side, which doesn't exactly happen in real life, but still a pretty cool effect. In our mission map, before we went to multiply with any of these random flickering, alternating lights, or this wave effect, if we just bring in that emission color, multiply it with the sample texture 2D of the emission map, and then take that multiply output to any of these other multiplies. That'll make it where we can tint our emission and make it more bright. Back in the scene view, now you can already see that this emission color is much more bright. So we drag down the intensity, it gets more dim, and we can make it extremely bright as well. So you can play with that based on your bloom settings to get a really cool look. So I think that's pretty cool. Those are the three different ways that I wanted to show you today about how to mask in and out those different lights to add some juice into your emissive materials. And if you got value out of this video and you want to learn more about Shader Graph, you can check out my Unity Shader Graph course where I partner with Game Dev TV. I've got a link in the description to that course where we go over a bunch of different stuff in Shader Graph where you can start from knowing literally nothing to being able to make really cool fire and snow effects. If you want to show your support for this channel, there's a few ways you can do that. First, you can use the Unity Asset Store and Humble Bundle links in the description. Whenever you do that, that gives me a small portion of the purchase price and helps me a lot and it doesn't charge you a single dime. You could take that course so you get even more value or you can directly support the channel by going to patreon.com slash Academy or clicking join or super thanks right here on YouTube. Both of those will get your name up here on the screen and get shout outs starting at the awesome tier. At the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen. At the tremendous tier, you get access to this Patreon exclusive dissolve shader. At the awesome tier, there's Ivan, Rulin, Iphiobolus, Perry, and Mustafa. There's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.